for our next news special report. Tonight we're diving deep into President Biden's latest and most controversial act, authorizing airstrikes in Yemen without congressional approval. This decision has not only sparked outrage internationally, but has also led to a startling revolt within his own party. Democrats are now openly challenging the president, accusing him of constitutional violations. So what does this mean for Biden, his administration, and America's role on the global stage? The ramifications of the act are far-reaching and complex. We'll uncover the layers of this developing story, shedding light on the conflicts, the drama, and the challenges that lie ahead. This is a moment in American politics that could redefine the Biden presidency, so stay with us as we unravel the facts, the, the, the implications, leading to a final thought that you simply can't miss. Now, before we dive into Biden's controversial Yemen decision, let's talk about staying warm through these tough times, just like our nation's foreign policy is heating up, so are our heating bills. Experts warned of soaring costs, and they weren't kidding. The average home heating cost is skyrocketing by over 17%, hitting a whopping $1,200. And that's why I use this incredible portable heater. It's like having a smart strategy in a cold world, efficient, effective, and saving us from those greedy utility costs. Compact and powerful, it's perfect for any room, mirroring our need for smart solutions in complex times. Don't miss out on this lifesaver. Get 55% off at GetWarmNow.com and enjoy a cozy, cost-effective winter. That's GetWarmNow.com. Now, in a move that is sending shockwaves through the political landscape, President Biden authorized airstrikes in Yemen, a decision that has not only had international but domestic implications. This act has resulted in a significant divide within his own party, with Democrats openly criticizing the president for bypassing congressional approval, a step deemed essential by the Constitution. Now, the strikes targeting Houthi military sites were conducted in response to attacks on international maritime vessels in the Red Sea. President Biden's statement emphasized the necessity of the strikes for maintaining freedom of navigation in critical global waterways. However, this reasoning has not quelled the uproar. Critics, including prominent figures within the Democrat Party, argue that the president's unilateral decision to authorize military action is a clear violation of the Constitution. U.S. Representative Ro Khanna, a Democrat, took to social media to express his disapproval, emphasizing the constitutional requirement for presidential consultation with Congress before engaging in military action. Khanna also appeared on CNN where he blasted the Biden administration for its decision, highlighting the longstanding constitutional protocols that appear to have been bypassed. Take a look. Joining me now is Democratic Congressman from California, Ro Khanna. Uh, Congressman Khanna, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, this is, as I just mentioned to, uh, to Nick Robertson, uh, really a tense moment for this White House. And you have said that President Biden should not have launched this strike. Why? Well, Abby, what I've said is he should have come as the Constitution requires to Congress. And that was echoed in a bipartisan way by Senator Mike Lee, uh, Representative Jonathan Jackson, and many other senators and Congress people. The Constitution requires that if there is not an imminent threat of self-defense, that he has to come to Congress. And here we know uh, by your own uh, reporting that uh, this has been going on since December. He's assembled an entire international coalition. He certainly should have come to Congress so that we can discuss whether this actually could put more American troops at risk. I'm concerned about retaliation in Iraq and whether it could draw us into a Middle East war. And I believe that he did not follow the Constitution. The White House says that the strikes are a direct response to a January 9th Houthi attack on an American commercial vessel. And as our, our reporters have noted, uh, these attacks uh, have been, in some cases, close calls. Are those not uh, direct attacks that would require some kind of defensive response from this administration? They, if there is an imminent attack, they can defend the ship. But these attacks have been going on since early December, as the president's own statement says. And we've gone to the United Nations. We've gotten resolutions. Not once uh, have they come to the United States Congress to discuss what the appropriate response would be. And, you know, it's uh, if you talk to actually our Saudi uh, allies or UAE, the Saudis tried to bomb the Houthis for eight years. And they regret that war. And it did not... Uh, deter the Houthis. It actually uh, made the Houthis stronger. And they would caution against getting into a conflict with the Houthis. Uh, and what they would tell you, or the Qataris would tell you, is we need to work towards de-escalation. We need to work towards a ceasefire uh, in Gaza to try to make sure that America does not get caught up in a war that 
scoots up oil prices, uh, and that puts our treasure and our troops at risk. Similarly, Representative Cory Bush, reflecting the views of the progressive wing of the party or the squad, condemned the strikes, focusing on the moral and financial implications of continued military involvement in the Middle East. In stark contrast, former President Trump weighed in on the issue, criticizing Biden's decision and questioning the rationale behind using advanced military technology against Yemen. Trump's remarks underscored the ongoing debate about the appropriate use of military power and the necessity of such actions. Let's take a look. Crooked Joe Biden is not only dumb and incompetent, I believe that he has gone mad, a stark raving lunatic with his horrible and country-threatening environmental open borders and DOJ FBI weaponization policies. He is a mental catastrophe that is leading our country to hell. We'll end up in World War III because of this man and for no reason whatsoever. Thank you. From a strategic standpoint, the Pentagon outlined that the strikes targeted over a dozen Houthi-controlled military sites, crucial in degrading the group's capacity to launch attacks on shipping lanes. These targets included radar installations, drone and missile storage, and launch sites. The precision and scale of the strikes were significant, utilizing Tomahawk missiles and coordinated airstrikes. The Houthi response to the airstrikes was swift to define Houthi leader Ali al Quham warned of consequences following retaliation against American and British interests in the region. This escalation hints at a potentially wider conflict, raising concerns about the stability of the region. Here's more. Joe Biden's orders, unconstitutional of course, could easily be another impeachable offense. Now the moment the first bombs landed, take a look at this. Now, the situation escalated further with the Houthis threatening attacks on American military installations in the region. This development indicates a significant uptick in tensions and the possible expansion of the conflict. A series of events leading up to the strikes reveal a complex geopolitical situation. Iranian-backed Houthi militants have reportedly attempted to attack and harass multiple ships in international waters, posing a threat to global maritime security. Now, these incidents have been separate from Operation Prosperity Guardian, a defensive coalition operating in the region. Now, this escalation follows Biden's reversal of Trump's designation of the Yemeni Houthis as a terrorist group. The move intended to address the humanitarian disaster in Yemen is now under scrutiny given the developments. The Houthis, who have taken over significant portions of Yemen, including the capital Sana, have been a resource of regional instability. The airstrikes have also reignited debates about Biden's foreign policy approach, particularly in light of his previous criticism of Trump's brinksmanship with Iran. You can see this tweet here. Biden had emphasized the need for congressional approval for any warlike actions, a stance that seems at odds with his recent decisions. Amidst this backdrop, reports of Hezbollah sleeper cells in the United States have emerged, raising concerns about the consequences of open borders and the potential for domestic security threats. Watch. This is a very sophisticated terror organization, Sean. It's been reported that there are sleeper cell agents from Hezbollah in the United States. They have proxies around Latin America. We'll remember their attacks in Argentina and other places for many years. And of course, we can't forget the Beirut attacks. Uh, so Hezbollah wow. has, it's a terror group that has long roots and long capability to attack and kill Americans. In a display of public dissent, protesters gathered in New York City's Times Square chanting slogans against the U.S. and U.K. involvement in Yemen. This public outcry reflects the growing discontent with foreign military interventions. Watch.
As the complex situation unfolds, the ramifications for U.S. foreign policy and the Biden administration's approach to international conflicts are significant. The president's decision has not only sparked a debate about the constitutional limits of executive power, but also the role of America in the world. If you got value from this report, tap subscribe. And now, my final thought. President Biden's decision to authorize airstrikes in Yemen, bypassing congressional approval, is more than a political misstep. It's a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked executive power. This action met with widespread criticism, even within his own party, underscores a troubling pattern of decision-making that jeopardizes not only our nation's constitutional values, but also its international standing. Biden, who once criticized such unilateral decisions, now finds himself at the helm of a similar controversy, dragging the United States into yet another conflict in the Middle East. This isn't just about Yemen. It's a reflection of a deeper issue within our republic's leadership. The American people deserve transparency and adherence to constitutional process, especially when it comes to matters as grave as war. The story matters because it's a litmus test for our nation's commitment to democratic principles and the rule of law, principles that must be upheld regardless of political affiliation. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.